In today's episode, a musical composer sets off into nature to capture the amazing sounds of the untamed wilderness. While recording the chirping of the birds, he fails to realize the birds were actually warning him of the man-eating bear sneaking up on him. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the terrifying bear attack on Julian Gautier. Welcome to Final Affliction. Julian Gautier was a musical composer. He was inspired by the sounds of nature and often took to recording the great outdoors to include in his unique musical performances. He was born in Canada to French parents. The wilderness and great outdoors were an integral part of his upbringing. But at the age of 19, he and his family moved back to France. In 2017, at the age of 42, he secured his dream position as a composer in residence for the Brittany Symphony Orchestra. It was an incredible opportunity to showcase his work. The inspiration he got from the natural world was still a big part of his masterpieces. He spent five months on the Kerguelen Islands in Antarctica, recording the sounds of nature for his orchestral piece called Symphony Austral, or Southern Symphony. The piece is intertwined with the sounds of penguins, seals, and the howling icy winds. A lot of preparation went into making his music. Recording the sounds was the fun part, but organizing the practical and logistical side of his travels was time-consuming. Following the success of his Southern Symphony, which was aired on French radio, he planned a visit back to his roots, Canada. The country was such a large part of his life, and having some of the sounds of home in his future work was a way of keeping Canada close to his heart. The trip was three years in the making, and Julien took with him biologist Camille Tuscany. The two of them planned to canoe nearly 1,000 miles down the Mackenzie River from Fort Providence to Inuvik. Along the way, Julien would be recording the sounds of the Canadian wilderness to work into his next symphony. But he would never get the chance to make his musical masterpiece. Disaster was about to strike in the worst way imaginable. The adventure was planned to take 30 days between August and September, and during that time, Camille's main job was to take photos of Julien as he made his recordings. Upon returning to France, Julien then planned to create a mini-concert around the project, with Camille's photos playing in the background. They crammed all their belongings into their two-man canoe. Julien stashed all his sound recording equipment into watertight containers when not in use. At the end of each day, they pulled up, dragging their canoe ashore and set up camp. After eating their dinner around the campfire, they would settle into their tents, ready to take on the next leg of their journey. On August 6th, Julian updated his social media, describing the adventure through the rugged countryside as intense, tiring, and inspiring. During the same update, Julian suggested bear activity in the area. He reported that despite canoeing for five days, he and Camille hadn't seen a single soul for three of those days, except for four bears. Maybe this was a sign of things to come. As they canoed along through the breathtaking scenery, they were heading into some of the most remote wilderness in Canada. But halfway through their trip, something went horribly wrong. On the night of August 14th, 2019, Julian and Camille went to sleep in their separate tents. They had finished their paddling for the day, eaten dinner, and then turned in for the night. But in the darkness, something was approaching. It was drawn to the smells and the presence of two humans in its territory. The keen sense of smell, 100 times more powerful than a human's, bears are thought to be able to home in on their potential prey from 20 miles away. Neither Julien nor Camille stirred. Outside their tents was a grizzly bear. It sniffed around their campsite, searching for signs of food. The sound from the river's rushing water masked any footsteps or snorts from the investigating bear. It was stealthy, curious, and it was on the hunt. A predatory bear can stalk a human undetected. Despite their immense size, they have the ability to sneak up on unsuspecting prey until they are within pouncing distance. 
The bear let out a low growl as it sniffed the canvas of Julian's tent. The photographer continued to sleep, unaware of the imminent danger he was in. Suddenly, it tore through the thin tent sides, its sharp, curved claws slicing through the canvas like tissue paper. A second later, and without hesitation, the bear dived inside. Before Julian could tell what was happening, he felt an immense weight on top of him, pushing him down. The claws from the bear tore into his chest, and he gasped. Then it thrust its face forwards and clamped its jaws around Julian's neck. The attack was rapid, powerful, and relentless. With no light to see what was going on, Julian grappled in the darkness. His cries were silenced by the river and by the crushing of the bear's jaws, suffocating him and making it impossible for him to cry out. Then the bear tugged, forcefully pulling Julian from his tent. He kicked with his legs, trying to get away from the animal. He punched and tried to grab the bear, pulling at it, trying to find a weak spot, but nothing he did deterred the bear. Although he tried to fight back, the bear had taken him completely by surprise, and he hadn't been able to defend himself. He had been in a deep sleep when he was pounced on, and with a bite force of around 1,000 psi, he struggled to release the bear's grip around his neck. The bear held onto Julian and dragged him away from his tent. The weight of Julian's body flattened the surrounding vegetation, leaving a trail of evidence. Blood poured from his neck as the bear's teeth severed blood vessels. He was losing blood fast and fading rapidly. With his adventure partner, none the wiser, and no one there to help him, he was at the mercy of the grizzly. But there isn't much one can do when a bear is in predatory mode. Most experts advise fighting back if the bear is intent on eating you, although it will likely stop at nothing. With male grizzly bears weighing in excess of 300 kilograms, 660 pounds, they are incredibly strong and powerful. A single swipe with their paw is enough to break a man's neck. The bear pulled Julian into the tree line, and moments later, Julian took his final breaths. He had lost too much blood. The injuries he sustained during the attack were unsurvivable, and he now lay motionless in the dark. The next morning, when dawn appeared on the horizon, Camille awoke from her slumber. She unzipped her tent and looked out through the flimsy canvas door. There, she saw the state of Julian's tent. It had been completely destroyed and now lay in a flattened and torn mess on the ground. Camille leapt up and jumped outside. She immediately began calling out for Julian. Her heart was in her mouth. She knew something terrible had happened to him and searched high and low for him. She could see the pools of blood around his tent. She followed the blood trail before spotting some other travelers. She ran over to them, distressed and begging for help. They had an emergency locating beacon and immediately activated it. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police received the distress beacon alert at 7.45 on the morning of August 15th. The signal was coming from 50 kilometers south of Tulita. The area was only accessible by sea and by air. The police and experts from the Department of Environment and Natural Resources flew into the area by helicopter. A search was immediately launched. There was clear evidence at the campsite of a bear attack, and now there was very little hope of finding Julian alive. Poor weather conditions hampered the search, and it wasn't until the following day that Julian's body was discovered. Camille and the group of other travelers she had made contact with for help were airlifted out of the area, physically unharmed. Members of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources located two bears in the area, a brown bear and a black bear. They shot both of them, and they were taken off to the labs for necropsies. Details from the findings have not been released, but it has been accepted that it was a grizzly bear that had attacked Julian. It was an incredibly tragic incident, made all the more tragic due to its rarity. Megan Wolberg from Environment and Natural Resources said that human bear encounters in the Northwest Territories are not uncommon, but fatalities are rare. There are estimated to be around 4,000 to 5,000 grizzlies in the Northwest Territories and a similar number of black bears. There had been three fatal attacks in the region since 2001, 
Two of those were by black bears and one from a grizzly. Unfortunately, on August 6, 2017, Julian Gauthier was added to those statistics of the latest bear attack victim to meet their terrifying final affliction.